All right, so today we have some area diagrams. You may think it's geometry, but it's actually some algebra too. Um, this also might seem very different than yesterday's uh, X puzzles, but in a couple days, everything's gonna come together um, and it should all make sense um, and it should be a good way of doing it for you. So we have Susan's studio apartment is shown at the right. Assuming that all the rooms are rectangular, find the quantities described below. All measurements are in feet. So we wanna find the area of Susan's apartment. Explain how you arrived at the answer. Uh, and be prepared. So, a reminder, we find area of a rectangle, um, and that's base times height, um, or some people think of it as uh, length times width. So either way you think of it, that's fine. Um, but we wanna find uh, the area of this rec these rectangles. So pause the video and uh, see if you can figure out how big is her apartment. And we're actually gonna do it two different ways here. All right, so first thing we can do here one way uh, is to find the area of each room, so the living room and the bathroom. So the living area, uh, we can do area equals 10 times 15 to get an answer of 150. And then we can do the bathroom, and the area is going to be 7 times 15, uh, because if that's 15, then this is also 15 as well as this also being 15, this being seven, that being 10, uh, just because that is how rectangles work. So then that would be 105. And then if I know that the living area is 150 and the bathroom is 105, then I can simply just add those two answers together to get a total of 255 uh, feet squared. It does say measurements are in feet. There's the answer. So then we can also uh, do it the a different way and we can just find the area of the whole apartment at once and we can say well I know that the the area part is going to be 15 right so this width right here our base is 15 and then know that the height is going to be um, this entire height, right? So instead of thinking of it as two different um, rooms, think of it as just the one apartment. So if this part is 10 and that part is seven, I can just add those together and I can get that uh, the height is gonna be 10 plus seven, which would then be 17, which gives us an answer of 255 feet squared. So those are your two methods. Um, obviously get us the same answer, which is good. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second too. So you can find the area of each rectangle, put them together, or find just the area of the whole thing right away. All right, so we're going to do a little bit more work here with uh, Randy's apartment, and we're going to find the area of Randy's apartment. So, um, Question A here says, find the area of Randy's studio apartment by adding the individual areas of each room. Uh, this method is called area as a sum. So we want to find out what this first room is. So 12, if this one is 12 and this is 12, then we can just multiply those together. Remember, area is just base times height. So 12 times 12 is 144. So we can take the area of one of the rooms which would be 12 times 12 and get 144. And then we could find the area of the other room, uh, which this is again gonna be 12, so 12 times seven and get 84 for that room. 12 times seven, which is 84. Um, and we call this problem area as sum. So area as a sum, because our last step here now is to add these two areas together to get the total area. So my very last uh, step is to sum. So 144 plus 84 would be 228. And our second method here, we're gonna call area as a product, because uh, we're gonna find it by multiplying the dimensions, length and width of the apartment altogether. So once again, for area for this one, um, I know that we have our side of the apartment, which is gonna be 12. And then we have the base here, 
which is going to be 12 plus 7, so whatever that equals. Um, then I can do 12, and then 12 plus 7, that gives me 19. And we call this area as a product because now my last step here is to multiply. So we're going to multiply 12 times 19 for a total of 228. Uh, once again, it does say measurements are in feet, so we'll label these as feet squared. And last question, so area as a sum, we got the answer of 228. And area as a product, we got 228. So the question is, did we expect those two numbers to be equal? Why or why not? And hopefully as you're thinking about this, you're thinking, well, yeah, hopefully they should be the same, right? Because if we're finding area of an apartment, the apartment isn't shifting sizes depending on how we measure it, right? It's one apartment, we're just finding it two different ways. So we should get the same answer in the end. Um, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so for these area diagrams now, uh, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can write them as area as a product and area as a sum. Go ahead and look at the last couple notes to see what's the difference um, and see if you can figure these out. All right, real quick, here's the first one, letter A. Um, so remember, area as a product means that you add the base first and then multiply as your last step, right? Product meaning multiplication. Where area as a sum means we're going to multiply first, and then our last step is going to be to add the two smaller places, um, smaller rooms together. Uh, once again, we got the same answer, and that makes sense. We should get the same answer for both of these. And for this one, once again, getting 264 as our answer uh, for each of the areas. Um, once again, product, so it'll be 11 times 9 plus 15, the side, so 11 times the side, and areas of sum, finding the small one, and then finding the bigger rectangle individually. All right, so we have the same thing going on. Uh, feel free to uh, fill in part of the information that we need, and then find areas of product and areas of sum. So for this first part, I'll get you started. Um, we need to figure out what this is, what the dimensions are going to be. Um, I do see that this is 4, and if this whole area is 16, then we've got to figure out 4 times what number is going to give me 16. Um, and hopefully you can come up with that that's going to be 4, otherwise just use your calculator do 16 divided by 4. And now once we know this is 4, and this bottom part here is 8, then we can do it and figure out that that's going to be 32. And now with all that information, you should be able to figure out the area as a product and the area as a sum. And then go ahead and do that for part B too. Uh, pause the video, come back when you're done. All right, so we have our two answers here. Uh, take a look at them for area. We get 48 for the part A and we get 220 for part B. Uh, make sure you look to make sure you got those answers the correct way. Uh, it's important to know the difference between areas of product and areas of sum.